Hey everybody and welcome to this, my third of three videos on the Nikon F100. And in this video we're going to cover the menus. So everything that we're going to do is accessed by holding down, holding down the whole time, the custom functions button. And then everything that we're going to set is going to be viewed on this top LCD screen. So if you want to follow along for this, it's on um, manual page 70 and the description has a link to the manual. If you want to restore the factory def defaults, you hold down the CSM button and the mode button for longer than two seconds. And for all of these, zero is the default option unless I specify otherwise when we talk about it. So let's go into custom function one here. And you use the rear command dial to select the custom function and the front command dial to select the option for each function. So, number one is automatic film rewind. One is enabled, zero is disabled. Basically, zero means that at the end of the roll, the camera will not automatically rewind it. You have to hold down uh, this button and this button together to get the rewind. One means that the camera will automatically rewind as soon as it hits the end of a roll. Personal preference on this, I prefer it to automatically rewind. Two is the EV stops. One third, uh, three is one third, two is a half, and one is a full stop. There is some element of personal preference in this, however, if you're using slide film, it's better to use one third of a stop because the exposure window on slide film is narrower than it is with other types of film. But if you, for instance, shoot only black and white, then um, number one would be a a fine option and would allow you to scroll through shutter speeds and apertures more quickly, especially in manual mode. But um, I personally prefer a third of a stop increments just to have a little bit more exposure control. Three is your bracketing order. So for zero, what you want to do is check out the manual on pages 58 and 59. There are tables explaining how the bracketing exposure order works with different settings in this camera. It's way more in depth than I want to get into with this video. So, so if you want to have the bracketing exposure be different based on your camera settings, check out the, the manual. One is darkest to brightest. So underexposed, properly exposed, overexposed. And this largely is personal preference. I happen to like knowing that it will always be the same no matter what I do. So, um, and under normal over is pretty standard. So that just seems to make the most sense to me. Four is autofocus with shutter. And your options are zero and one. With zero, autofocus starts when you have to press the shutter. With one, autofocus only works if you use the AF on button on the back of the camera. Just a matter of personal preference and shooting style for this one. Five, warnings with DX coded film. Zero and one are your options. Zero, zero is it after the film is advanced to frame one, if, there's, if, if the, the, the DX code isn't there or is unreadable, you'll get a warning. One is when the film is loaded. So I prefer one, I'd like to know that there's, the DX code isn't readable or isn't present on the film cassette when I load the film. Six. Focus area selection wraps, disabled or enabled. This is the difference, if you remember video games, especially like RPGs, the world wrapping or the world not wrapping. Can you hit the edge of the map or can you keep going and you know, circumnavigate the globe? With one, it's enabled, the world wraps, meaning that if you select a focus point and you hit right, you can keep going right until you get around back to the left. With zero, you can hit right and then you'll stop when you hit the edge of that focusing area and you will never go past it. So this is just personal preference whether or not you want to be able to scroll in loops or not. Seven is AEL with shutter half depressed. Zero and one. Zero is disabled, one is enabled. With zero, auto exposure lock is only engaged when you hit the AEL AFL button back here, right there. With one, auto exposure lock is engaged when you have to, press, have to press the shutter button. 
So personal preference on which one of those you would like. Eight is film advance when back closes, disabled or enabled. With zero, the film will advance after loading and pressing the shutter button once. With one, the film will advance as soon as you close the film back. Nine is dynamic autofocus with close subject priority in single servo autofocus, enabled or disabled. Now the difference is that um, enabling will have the camera focus on the closest subject. Disabling will have the camera focus on what it thinks is the appropriate subject. 10 is the exact same thing but with continuous servo autofocus. 11 is auto exposure and flash exposure bracketing. So your options are AS, which is the default, AE and SB. AS, AE, and SB, okay. So with AS, the camera will bracket images taken with a flash using the flash power and camera settings. With AE, it only uses the camera settings. And with SB, it only uses the flash power. Okay, so what that means is there are three ways to control exposure with flash. The amount of light coming out of the flash, your shutter speed, and your aperture. When it says using camera settings, that means aperture and shutter speed. So in AS, your camera will use the flash power, the shutter speed, or the aperture, or a combination thereof, to obtain a proper exposure when you use a flash. In AE, it will have only a set amount of flash power and use the camera settings to obtain proper exposure. And in SB, your camera settings will remain fixed, but your flash power will, will fluctuate. Matter of personal preference and shooting style on this, largely, uh, I prefer having the flash be adjusted to obtain ex proper exposures. I generally have a control over the shutter speed and aperture that I want to use, but and the amount of light coming out of the flash is not a huge issue to me. Uh, 12 is swap the command dials, disabled or enabled. With disabled, the command dials work as they do in most cameras. If you swap them, then they work in the opposite manner that they do in most cameras, and that's whether they control shutter or aperture front and back, basically. Matter of personal preference for this one total only. 13 is the easy exposure value compensation, which is applicable only to program shutter priority and aperture priority modes. Now, basically what this means is normally for exposure value compensation, you would have to hold this button down here and then adjust your exposure value compensation with the rear command dial. With this enabled, if you are in, let's say, shutter priority mode, you can exposure compensate just by rotating the command dial, which is not used in that mode, without holding down the EV button. So matter of personal preference on this, I prefer to have it set to zero because I want to know when I'm getting exposure value compensation. Without holding this down, it can be fairly easy to bump the command wheel and turn exposure value compensation on or off. 14 is film advance and multiple exposures. Zero is single frame and one is continuous. This should be set to single. I can't think of a time when double exposures make sense in continuous mode, but if you can, please comment. Basically, the difference is, are you doing multiple exposures with in single every time you press the shutter button or in continuous, let's switch this to continuous here and switch over to multiple exposures. There you're doing multiple exposures in continuous drive mode. Um, I just don't know of a time when you would want to do multiple exposures in continuous drive mode. That, it just doesn't make sense to me. 15 is your delay time for auto meter switch off. And the numbers here are seconds. So your options are 16, eight, six, and four. This is just a matter of personal preference. I like 16, but if you wanna have it be fewer than that, there's nothing wrong with that at all. 16 is your self timer duration in seconds. Your default here is 10 seconds, but your options are two, five, 10, and 20. This is just how long you wanna have as your self timer. 10 is, was, has been the standard for a long time, so 
um, whatever you want to use works just fine. 17 is LCD illumination with any button, disabled or enabled. And with disabled, you have to hit the uh, LCD illumination switch to turn on the LCD illumination. With enabled, any button you push will turn this thing's illumination on. It's a matter of personal preference, but um, honestly, I think it's kind of annoying to have this continually turning on and off. 18 is data imprinting, enabled or disabled. And this can be turned off after the first or any frame so that not all images on a roll have data. What that means, and this only applies if you have data back MF29, by the way. But what that means is you can turn it on, take a frame that's got the date stamp on it, and then turn it back off afterwards, and you don't have to have the date stamp on every image. 19 is aperture control. Now this one is a bit complex, and it applies only to variable aperture zoom lenses and some macro lenses. And the difference here is if the act of zooming or increasing magnification has no effect on aperture setting, like the actual number, or if those acts cause the camera to adjust the aperture. So zero is aperture does not change, one is the aperture keeps a set number of stops from wide open. So with zero, now this applies to things like zoom lenses that say f3.5 to f5.6 or macro lenses like the uh, 55 millimeter f3.5, which is at f3.5 at infinity and f5.6 at closest focus. With this, let's say you're, you have it set to zero and you set the aperture to f8. No matter where you zoom across the zoom range or focus across the macro lenses focus range, it will stay at f8. With one, it will stay a fixed number of stops from wide open. So let's say your zoom is f3.5 to f5.6, and you are all the way zoomed out, and you're at f11. Well, if you zoom all the way back in, instead of staying at f11, you would go to f71, because that's the same number of stops from f3.5 as f11 is from f5.6. I mean, honestly, matter of personal preference, this camera obviously can't do video, so it's not useful in that regard. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I honestly don't understand. If you can think of a situation where this is useful, uh, I'd be interested to hear it because I haven't thought of one yet or come across one. 20 is your shutter release and self-timer LED. Zero is disabled, one is enabled. With one, the self-timer LED only flashes before and after exposure, not in a countdown. With zero, the LED will flash as part of a countdown. Personal preference, um, I happen to like it flashing in a countdown. That way I know that the photo is actually going to be taken and roughly how long I have. 21 is the AEL-AFL button, which is this guy right here on the back. And your options are 0, 1, 2, and 3, where 0, zero locks auto exposure and auto focus when the AEL-AFL button is pressed. 1 locks only the a auto exposure, 2 locks only autofocus, and 3 is both, but it's a toggle. So it's just a matter of personal preference how you want to use your AEL, a AFL button. I happen to like a toggle with film cameras. Don't always like a toggle with digital cameras. I don't know why my shooting style is different there. Anyway, just personal preference how you want to shoot. And 22, which is the last function, is aperture selection. And basically, zero and one, aperture and zero, the aperture can only be selected with the rear command dial. And with one, the aperture ring can be used. So with zero, um, bet you with the lens I had in zero, I can use, nope, I cannot. Um, with zero, if your camera allows you to control the aperture from the camera, you can do that. With one, it'll. You can do it, and you can only do it that way, even if there's an aperture ring on the lens. With one, you can use the aperture ring on the lens, and this is very useful if you are using something like an older AIS lens, or you prefer to use an aperture ring, or there's something wrong with the electronic contacts on your lens, and it's not communicating with the camera like my lens wasn't, and you have to use the aperture ring. Uh, but largely a matter of personal preference for shooting style. And we're done, and that is it. That is a lot to go through. So that is my third video on the Nikon F100. 
There we go. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera. <laughs>